Hello everyone and welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick and in today's video we are looking at the level 5 diploma in education and training. Now this is a welcome video uh, to welcome you to the, the qualification and if you are obviously new here then we are looking for obviously an information video this is going to be a good guide to answer some questions to see whether or not the level five diploma in education and training is for you so welcome to the the video and if you're new here then do uh please do uh, like the video and subscribe to our youtube channel to receive the latest news and alerts from the train aid team so the purpose of the video is to really to introduce you to the course structure to the level five diploma in education and training uh, we are going to be discussing who the level five diploma and education and training is is for uh what makes a good level five det learner um the role of the mentor how the assignments work what teaching evidence is required and also the progression routes available after the level five diploma in education and training as well so this video uh, should answer all of your questions if you're considering the course um if you do have any questions of course please contact the office team uh reach out to us and we will be able to answer any questions you might have uh regarding the qualification as well so let's get started with uh the course structure well this is an online uh self-paced qualification and the course is broken down into two strands you have the seven written assignments and you also have a portfolio of teaching evidence as well so if you're completing the course you can take as long as you need there are no cutoff points um, as you can see we have a range of uh, different uh, assignment topics there are seven units to complete and the suggested word count is somewhere between five to six thousand words per assignment however you can write as much detail as you wish now for anyone who signs up to the level five diploma in education and training we do send a hard copy of the level five uh, textbook in the post to support you this is the angravels principles and practices of teaching uh, and training so we do send you a hard copy textbook and that is going to help you complete those seven written assignments so our awarding body is teaching qualifications uk that is tq uk and we have obviously our seven written assignments we've chosen those to give you a good blend of different teaching theories principles um, we also have obviously the action research project unit four looks at the wider professional practice as well so a great range of uh, different assignments which we think you will obviously enjoy now along with the uh, assignments we also have a portfolio of of teaching evidence as well and during the video today we'll have a look at each of the different teaching evidence requirements as well just a few pointers with regards to the portfolio uh, with your teaching evidence you can submit this as many times as you wish to the train aid team to review we have a dedicated marking team and the team email is det at train hyphen aid.co.uk and the marking team will give you feedback within five working days and once again you can send in your assignments and teaching evidence as many times as you wish so don't feel you have one submission and that's it you can send in your evidence to be to be reviewed as many many times as you wish as well with your teaching evidence we do encourage you to use your own uh, templates your own school or colleges systems uh, perhaps the own lesson plans as well however if you're new to teaching not a problem you can uh, submit your evidence using train aid uh, our own uh, templates as well so those can be submitted and to be reviewed by the marking team as well but once again um, this uh, qualification the evidence is all electronic there's no need to print off anything and, and submit any hard copies there 
So just moving on, uh, one of the key questions when starting the, the level five course is uh, what if I've completed a level four certificate in education and training? So that's the level four CET, otherwise known as Kettles. So if you have completed a level four certificate in education and training, you can indeed make your level five DET course shorter. So as we can see just on the screen, we offer the level four certificate in education and training. And if you do have your level four CET, uh, the, the Kettles qualification, then you can reduce um, the course. OK, so this means that um, if you do have your level four, there are five written assignments to complete instead of seven. Um, you do not need to complete units two or 15. There are six practical uh, lesson observations and self-evaluations instead of eight. And there's 80 teaching hours to log instead of 100. OK, so there is a benefit of doing the level four teaching qualification first. But the majority of customers do complete the level five from the very beginning. But please do let us know if you do have a level four CET or a Kettles teaching qualification, because you will be able to make your level five teaching qualification shorter. OK, as we can see, um, this is our teaching evidence grid. Um, this is our level five diploma teaching evidence checklist. And throughout your level five journey, we will be using this as a grid to sign off your work. And this will help you to navigate uh, your evidence uh, throughout the course. So as mentioned, if you have achieved your level four certificate in education and training already, then um, the, the highlighted elements in yellow uh, signify uh, where uh, your evidence will be reduced. OK, so there is a, a key benefit with doing the level four uh, qualification first. It does reduce um, those units and teaching evidence as well. But if you do have any questions regarding uh, your, your level four, if you would like for us to obviously check your certificates, any teaching certificates, that's not a problem, then uh, we can obviously check that for you. Okay, so just to, to move on, um, who is the level five uh, DET, the Diploma in Education and Training for? That's a very good question. So you must be teaching within the post 14 sector or higher, meaning that the, 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 the candidates who you are teaching to must be aged 14 or higher. If you are teaching within, say, a primary setting, unfortunately, this qualification sadly is, is not for you. You might need to consider a PGCE route there. So if you're teaching to learners age 14 or above, perhaps you're teaching within a full time teaching position, part time or even voluntary, then this qualification uh, might be suitable for, for you. You must have access to 100 hours of, of teaching practice. So you must be teaching to groups or classes of learners. OK, groups is anywhere from three to four learners all the way up to perhaps a class of, of 20 learners. OK, so you must be teaching to groups or classes of learners. Unfortunately, teaching hours cannot be one to one. That is deemed as more tutoring. OK, so before you sign up to the level five, uh, please do make sure that you do have access to those 100 teaching hours and that also your organization is going to be supportive of you embarking on the level five. The level five typically takes uh, candidates somewhere between nine to 12 months, but you can take as long as you need to achieve the qualification. There are no cutoff dates and some learners do complete the course within five to six months. There's no uh, time limit that you need to spend on the qualification as well. Um, another good factor to consider when obviously embarking on the level five is that you do have an in-house mentor and this is going to be your support net mechanism 
uh, within your level five diploma. We are here to help you every step of the way. The, the train aid team are fully supportive of you embarking on the qualification, but you really need an in-house mentor to support you with your progress and also to observe you eight times. Um, these eight lesson observations are to be carried out uh, between you and your mentor. So the mentor is going to be observing you. They must have a minimum of a level five teaching qualification or higher themselves as well. If you do not have an in-house mentor, no problem, then please do reach out to us. TrainAid can observe you live via Zoom or Teams, okay? But each uh, lesson observation will cost £60, including VAT. So if you do have a, a nominated mentor in-house who can support you, then we would certainly encourage you to, to do that as well. How do the assignment work? Okay, how do the assignments work? Well, that is a very good question. So there are seven written assignments to complete. And once again, uh, we do uh, provide you with the, the level five uh, principles and practice of, of teaching and training textbook in the post. And we also provide you with seven written assignment templates. Now, the templates have been created uh, by the train A team to support you with your, your online self-paced qualification. As we can see on the screen, um, this is just a snippet of one of our assignment templates. So as you can see, you have the assignment title, uh, a variety of, of questions and some scaffolding questions. So the questions um, on the template are there to support you, uh, to, to help you towards the, the correct answer. But bearing in mind, you can take as long as you need to complete the assignments. There's no suggested word count. You can write as much detail as you wish. You won't be penalized for, for writing too much. Now, with regards to the assignments, uh, they can be written in the first, the third person or both. And we certainly do encourage you uh, to reflect on your current teaching practice or you could talk about your future teaching role as well. So you can also include screenshots or, or images of your teaching within your assignments. You can include perhaps screenshots of uh, teaching resources that you're utilizing within your teaching. So do make the assignments your, your very own as well. And the good news is that you can submit those seven written assignments as many times as possible to the marking team to get some formative feedback within those five working days. Um, and that should give you pointers to see if you're on the right track uh, with your assignments or whether you need some uh, some further detail or further support with your assignments as well. But just remember, if you're new to assignment writing, please don't be worried about this aspect. We're here to support you every step of the way with your assignment writing. A common question is, do I need to use references uh, for each assignment? Well, the answer to that is yes. Uh, so it is a level five uh, qualification. And typically with your assignments, we're perhaps looking for perhaps five to six uh, different sources of information. So once again, um, the level five textbook is going to be the main source of information when working through your assignments. But just remember, you can include uh, a range of other uh, sources of information which can be found uh, within other textbooks, websites, journals. You can also reference your own company policies, procedures, perhaps a staff handbook, and also news articles, what are happening perhaps within your own subject specialism, within your own subject area as well. When you begin the course, of course, we, uh, we, we provide you with uh, a reference list of some useful textbooks, websites for you to use. And many of these are free of charge as well. So when starting upon the level five, of course, you'll get your, your Anne Gravel's textbook, but also uh, we provide you with a reference list. And a lot of these resources and sources of information are free of charge as well. But just to reiterate, uh, we are looking for typically five to six references per assignment. Uh, and that shows a wider uh, range and a wider level of reading as well. 
we also use the Harvard referencing system. Um, once again, uh, we do provide you with support with referencing. So if you're new to perhaps writing assignments, if you're unsure what the term referencing means, or if you're looking for examples, then we do provide you with lots of support, uh, which is, is going to be really handy when it comes to, to referencing your own assignments as well. What support is available when writing these assignments? So obviously these seven written assignments are going to be written uh, perhaps when you're working, uh, perhaps within your, your, your balancing, perhaps your full-time teaching job, and you might be writing your assignments within your free periods. Well, there's lots of support available. So when you join TrainAid, we have our, our YouTube channel, which has obviously our YouTube uh, tutorials as well. Uh, we have the assignment tutorials, the P PDF assignment support slides, which are emailed to you when you begin the course. You, of course, have the assignment support templates with the, the range of scaffolding questions. When you sign up uh, to the qualification, you will have a, a, a Zoom and a Teams meeting with one of the, the train aid team. And of course, support is available both over the phone and with uh, a Zoom and a Teams meeting with one of the teams at any point as well. So if you're struggling, perhaps with an assignment question, not a problem, please reach out to us and one of the team will do will, will respond and they will give you lots of help and advice with each of the assignment questions there as well. But just to reiterate, you can submit your assignments as many, many times as you wish as well. And we do have a five day uh, marking turnaround policy. So when you do submit an assignment, we don't want you to stand still. We would like for you to obviously progress onto your next assignment whilst uh, awaiting feedback. OK, so don't stand still with your assignment. Then you can obviously move on to the next uh, assignment whilst awaiting feedback. But please do sign up to our YouTube channel um, and do have a look at the videos. They're very supportive and provide you with lots of detail and information on each of the assignments there. So please, please do have a look out. OK, um, so with every uh, level five learner, uh, we do like to show the, the certificate, the final end goal and, and to answer any questions you might have. So a typical question is, who is the awarding body? Well, the awarding body is TQUK, that is Teaching Qualifications UK. Um, they are uh, a, a nationally accredited uh, awarding body, OK? based in the UK and also overseas. They are, they are an international uh, awarding body as well. So once you achieve the level five diplo diploma in education and training, that's the highest level teaching qualification within the post 14 sector, meaning that you can teach, okay, within uh, colleges, within six forms, um, you can teach uh, any course or qualification that you have yourself. You can even look to teach overseas as well. So if that is a, a focus of yours to teach perhaps within an international school, then this qualification will help to obviously open doors uh, within the, the independent school sector uh, within uh, private schools or colleges. We would also recommend gaining QTLS as well, which I'll come on to very, very shortly. Um, but just to reiterate, this qualification does not expire. It does not need to be renewed. It's yours for life. OK, so this qualification does hold a lot of weight if you're looking to gain uh, a teaching post within the post 14 sector as well. Just to reiterate, primary teaching hours are not allowed. Uh, obviously, when signing up to this qualification, you must be teaching within that post 14 sector. So obviously, as you can see, um, the, the qualification is off-qual regulated. Uh, that means that the qualification is fully accredited. It's on the RQF framework, uh, meaning it's yours for life. It's fully recognized by all schools, college, colleges and teaching establishments as well. 
Another key question is, uh, do we have direct claim status? Well, the answer is yes, we do. We have a great relationship with uh, our partner TQ UK. And um, once you have achieved your, your qualification, once your uh, portfolio uh, has gone through the, the IV process, then the certificate takes typically up to 14 days to be generated and sent to you. Just remember, the certificate is always uh, sent to the booker of your qualification. So the booker does have a responsibility to pass the certificate on to you. Obviously, if you're the booker of the course, then the certificate will be sent to you um, as you uh, have paid for the, the qualification as well. Uh, you will receive a PDF electronic uh, email certificate, okay, followed by a hard copy certificate as well for your record. So the hard copy is available uh, on request from TQ UK. Um, as we can see, just in the photo, we have the unit transcript as well. So not only will you receive the certificate front sheet, you'll also receive the, the unit transcript uh, detailing the, the different uh, units that you achieved with uh, with train aid and it will also show the credits um, and also the the pass as well to show that you've passed each of those written uh, assignments there but obviously if you do have any questions regarding the certificate perhaps before embarking on the level five qualification please do get in contact uh, with the team here as well but once again the certificate is yours for life it's fully accredited and it does not expire progression areas so many level five learners do ask the the common question is where can i progress on to after gaining my my level five diploma in education and training that is a very good question well many of our learners do progress on to qtls and qtls stands for qualified teacher of learning and skills and as we can see here we have a, a certificate which you'll achieve at the end of the qtls process so what does it all mean? What does it stand for? Well, qualified teacher of learning and, and skills is a status. Um, and the status is 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 run through. Uh, it's organized by SET, which is the Society for Education and Training. Now, uh, the Society for Education and Training is is a, a, a is a network of of teachers within the post fourteen sector. So you can sign up to the society to receive the latest alerts, uh, CPD within the sector. There are conferences, and you can join the Society for Education and Training. But what is what is QTLS? Well, this status uh, allows for you if you've achieved your level five diploma in education and training that allows for you to work within perhaps a primary school setting it allows for you to teach within a secondary school setting or the independent school sector ultimately it puts you on parity with with qts which is qualified teacher status so if uh, a, a teacher has achieved their their teaching qualification perhaps uh, it could be a pgce they've achieved that through perhaps a, a primary or a, a secondary setting they perhaps they've gone to university and achieved uh, their qts that way qtls puts you on parity with with qts meaning that you'll be on the same pay scale uh, as someone who's achieved qts ultimately it, it opens doors to different teaching sectors but ultimately it, it does show that you are not standing still once you've achieved your level five diploma in education and training it shows you that you're you're focused on cpd that you're not standing still you're looking to progress your teaching skills further but what what's what's it all about and when can you achieve when can you apply for for qtls well as soon as you have achieved your level five diploma in education and training you can jump straight onto qtls and go for your status just remember there are two application windows uh there is the september and the january window that's where you must obviously apply uh to enroll uh during that window and then you, you will work on a portfolio of, of evidence, okay? You do need a mentor 
for this, where you will be uh, observed at the start and at the end of your QTLS journey. And it's all to do with working on perhaps uh, an area of, of development. And you will work perhaps um, on a, a CPD log. You have to upload uh, evidence to a, a portal um, and this is all working towards your QTLS status. It takes roughly six months to achieve. You will, of course, get a certificate at the end of it, and you will be notified whether you have achieved your QTLS status. But once again, um, my advice is to reach out to the Society for Education and Training to get the latest alerts on enrollment, uh, the latest information on entry requirements as well. But just remember, you will need a supporter. Uh, you will need a mentor with this status, okay? This uh, supporter, of course, it can be the same person who is your mentor for your level five diploma in education and training. But please do have a look at QTLS and also ATS as well. That's advanced teacher status. That's the next level up from QTLS as well. But of course, you can apply uh, once you have achieved your level five diploma in education and training. So let's have a, a jump back in uh, to the level five diploma in education and training. Now, the next uh, key question is the role of the mentor. And we have found that a successful level five diploma in education and training learners have a designated in-house mentor. This could be um, a fellow teacher. It can be a head of department. It can be a company manager or director. And they must have um, a level five diploma in education and training qualification themselves. They could have DETALS, a PGCE, QTS or QTLS. So if they have any of those teaching qualifications, a level five or higher, then they can certainly observe you. So the mentor, what is their role? Well, of course, they need to carry out eight formal lesson observations are on you. OK, um, they must sign your 100 hours teaching log and they must also sign and date the self-evaluation forms, which I'll come on to very shortly. Now, when it comes to uh, the role of the mentor, we always advise that, you know, it's a very important for them to meet with you perhaps once a week or once every two weeks to see how you're getting on with your level five uh, diploma teaching course. We here at TrainAid are, are here to support you. Uh, we are at the end of a, a phone line or we can arrange a Teams meeting, but we do actively encourage that you do keep your employer, that you do keep your school or college, wherever you're working, wherever you're teaching, in the loop of your level five pr uh, progress and your, your, your in-house mentor can support you with your level five journey as well. Once again, uh, we strongly advise that your mentor uh, does send a copy of their teaching certificate to the train aid team so we can approve this and make sure it's valid for, for them to be an observer. So it, they must have a level five teaching qualification or higher, such as a PGCE, uh, a learning and development qualification would, would not be suitable here. So it has to be a teaching qualification. So hopefully that criteria is nice and clear. Any, any questions then please do reach out uh, as well. So just to reiterate, um, with, with the, the role of the mentor, we have a list of, of qualifications which would be suitable for, for the role of the mentor. And as you can see, the qualifications which are not acceptable or the level four CET or the Kettles, leadership and management qualifications or assessor, carver, IQA. So those qualifications would not be uh, acceptable. It has to be a level five teaching qualification or higher. And once again, do please send in a copy of your mentor's certificate. By the way, you can have many uh, different mentors. It doesn't have to be one person who does the eight observations. If you have a team of teachers, if you're lucky enough to have a, a range of different teachers who would like to support you with the level five diploma, then of course, do send in all of their certificates. We'll save them to our database, to your, to your academic file, and we will release the observation report as well. So please do be aware that uh, you can have 
different uh, colleagues who are going to carry out your observations. Now, we are going to now look um, at um, the second strand of the, the qualification. So we're moving away from your assignments here. We are looking at the level five uh, teaching evidence. We are going to be looking at what is going to be required. As we can see here, we, we have 11 criteria to meet. And of course, you can submit your teaching evidence at any time. So if you wanted a break from, let's say, your assignments, then you could focus on submitting your teaching evidence. So just remember, your teaching evidence is electronic. You don't need to print off anything. You don't need to send us anything by post. Everything can be sent via the DET email. So please do send in your attachments of your, your work. You can send, obviously, work through uh, WeTransfer, uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, all of those systems as well. So we will have a look through each of the, the different sections here. But once again, you can submit your own teaching evidence, okay, using your own school or colleges, your own organization's templates, or you can use the, the train aid templates provided uh, by the organization as well. So please do use your own systems that you are more familiar with. So criteria number one, well, this is the teaching evidence log. Now you are required to log 100 hours of your very own teaching practice. As we can see here on the screen, we have a very basic table uh, where you have the date of the lesson, the course and the lesson details. So please include the, the title, the aim of the lesson, perhaps the, the, the lesson units, uh, perhaps provide us with a, a description of your, your course aim and objective. So what were you teaching and also the times so the duration of the lesson as well. You simply need to log 100 teaching hours. And as we know, you must be teaching to groups or classes of learners. So teaching cannot be one-to-one -one here. The teaching log can be typed um, or it can be handwritten. It might be easier to type uh, your lessons uh, onto the teaching hours log. Uh, lessons can, of course, be repeated. So if you're teaching a particular course uh, one day to a particular group and you're repeating that same lesson to another group, that's absolutely fine to do. That will chip away at your 100 hours. So that will be sub subtracted from your uh, 100 hours. So it's absolutely fine to repeat lessons. OK. And once 100 hours have been logged, please do ask a manager to sign and date the teaching hours log. So as we can see, we do require a signature from you who is undertaking the level five qualification and also a signature from a manager as well. We do like to see an electronic signature uh, from a manager or supervisor. So please do uh, complete the teaching hours log in your own time. And once 100 hours have been uh, signed off, uh, please do submit your teaching hours log. OK, you can also uh, submit a teaching timetable instead of the teaching hours log if you are a reg if you are teaching regularly. So let's say you're teaching perhaps 20 hours a week. And if you have a fixed timetable, fantastic. You can send us a copy of your teaching uh, timetable instead of the, the teaching hours log. That is absolutely fine. But you must also provide us with a, a confirmation email from a manager to, to say that you have delivered 100 hours of teaching practice. OK, but just to reiterate, uh, we do require um, an electronic signature rather than typed. If you are going to submit a teaching log to us, uh, you can also send a confirmation email from a manager or supervisor to, to confirm, to, to approve of the 100 hours of teaching practice. Just moving on, um, just to an example of the teaching hours log. This has been created by me. Um, so as we can see here, we have a range of, of courses that uh, I have delivered, such as a level three award in education training, the level four teaching qualification, and a variety of first aid courses. And as we can see, I put the, the, the course dates, uh, the times of the lesson, the hours as well, and all of the teaching hours together 
um, has uh, created 100 hours in in total. So we're looking for 100 hours and we also require you to sign and, and date uh, your, your teaching hours log. OK, so we are looking for an electronic signature from a manager or a confirmation email to, to really confirm achievement there. Um, but you can, of course, submit a teaching hours uh, timetable. So a timetable might look like this. Uh, if you do have one of those, then, of course, you can submit that in place of the teaching hours log. So once again, if you are teaching, for example, 20 periods a week, 20 hours a week, you can, of course, submit that. That's not a problem at all. And this is going to be very, very valuable. And we can, of course, uh, save that to your teaching hours log. So um, in terms of yourself, you, you do have uh, the option there of the teaching hours log or the timetable, but please do get in contact if you require any further clarity. Criteria two of the, the teaching evidence, we require a syllabus or specification. So uh, we are very interested to, to hear about what you are teaching to your learners. And we require from you a syllabus or specification. So what is a syllabus or specification? Well, this provides the reader with information about the course or qualification that you are teaching on. The specification usually provides the reader with information such as the course aim, the course objectives, the content which the learner is going to encounter, and also the assessment methods used as well. So we would like for you to send us uh, a syllabus or specification or some information about the course that you are delivering on. So the qualification that you are perhaps teaching, uh, whatever you are teaching for your level five hours we would like for you to of course submit that to us as we can see on the screen we have a, a screenshot of the level five uh, diploma in education and training syllabus so that can be found on the awarding body website so when you're looking for your own uh, perhaps course syllabus or specification have a look on uh, your awarding body website you can also perhaps find the syllabus within perhaps a college or a school intranet or any internal system Systems as well. You can also submit to us perhaps a staff or a learner handbook. And that's going to be really useful for us here at Train Aid because we're going to understand what you are teaching and, and training to your learners as well. Just some further information. So as we can see here, we have another page of the, 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 the syllabus and it does provide the reader with lots of key information. So uh, a learner can obviously read the, the syllabus and they can decide whether the course is for them. It provides them with qualification credit information, the guided learning hours, the grading criteria, um, the, the the reading list, the different course units as well. So there's a lot of information uh, within the syllabus, uh, which will be very, very useful for your learners. But ultimately, we are looking for the details of one or maximum of two courses as well. So any information about your course, which will meet the criteria, please do send to us and we can review it. Furthermore, within a, a course syllabus or specification, it provides the, the course units, the, the breakdowns, the progression areas as well. So as we can see just on this page, we have the different course units uh, available for the level five diploma in education and training. So for every new learner, they're provided with a course syllabus so they can see what they're going to be learning and how the course is going to be assessed. A common question with the level five diploma is, can I create my own syllabus or specification for the level five teaching course? Well, you certainly can. Uh, you can obviously submit your own syllabus um, if you're perhaps working within the private sector, perhaps you're working within a company. And if you're creating your very own bespoke courses, well, you can submit your own syllabus. It doesn't need to be an accredited course. It can be an unaccredited or a bespoke course as well. But any information regarding your training that you're delivering is incredibly valuable. And we would like to see that. And that will meet the criteria there. So just moving on to number three. Excuse me, we have a scheme of work. Now, a scheme of work is a fantastic 
tool within the arsenal of uh, a teacher or trainer. Now, a scheme of work is usually a spreadsheet which highlights the beginning, the middle, and also the ends of a course. Uh, a scheme of work is usually presented within a, a Word document, so within a table uh, or within perhaps an Excel spreadsheet. And it's, it's very much a tracking document which allows for the teacher or trainer to stay on track with their teaching delivery. So as we can see here, we have a scheme of work example. We have the aim of the course. We have the course objectives, the course location, the date as well. And we have a spreadsheet of the lesson dates, the session title and learning outcomes, the required resources and activities, the assessment methods, any remarks or reminders that the teacher needs to give to the, the students as well. So any reminders or uh, any submission dates as well. So a scheme of work is incredibly valuable to you. And they're often provided by the, your course awarding body as well. So there might be pre-made schemes of work available for you to submit as part of your level five diploma in education and training. So a scheme of work is something that we will need to see from you. Um, here is what a scheme of work does look like. Um, so as we can see, um, a scheme of work has the aim of the session, it has the objectives, and we also have uh, the input as well. We have the dates, the session titles, resources, and this is going to keep me as a teacher on track um, of my my, my teaching as well. So I can see whether I am on track with my teaching, whether I need to speed up my teaching. And the, the purpose of a, a scheme of work is it's going to help you as a teacher to make sure that you're teaching your, your course fully, that the course aim and objectives are fully met. Without a scheme of work as a teacher, we can be quite lost. Okay. And therefore, by having a scheme of work, it's going to keep you organized as a teacher as well. So what is required uh, for the level five diploma in education and training? Well, you are required to submit one scheme of work from a course or qualification that you are delivering on. A scheme of work can be perhaps two to three pages long. It doesn't need to be too detailed. Whatever your scheme of work looks like, okay, that will be approved, okay? We do have many examples of schemes of work here at Train Aid, which we can share with you to provide you with more information if you're new to perhaps creating a scheme of work. Um, so you, yes, you can submit your own scheme of work, but you can of course create a scheme of work using the Train Aid templates as well. So we do provide you with blank templates uh, and also completed examples as well. So you can create your very own scheme of work for your very own course as well. So we're here to support you with a scheme of work. And if you're new to it, please do not worry. We can help you to create a scheme of work. But just remember, a scheme of work is incredibly useful with breaking down your course or qualification into manageable sections. And we do require one scheme of work uh, within your teaching evidence portfolio. Criteria four of your teaching evidence is uh, lesson plans. Uh, so lesson plans are what teachers and trainers use on a day-to-day -day basis when delivering or facilitating a lesson. So lesson plans might be a page or two pages long in terms of level of detail, but they do help learn, they do help the teacher to keep on track with, with their teaching practice. So they use day-to-day and they are obviously there to keep a teacher on track and they can see what uh, they are teaching. Just on the screen, we have a, a very basic lesson plan, which involves the dates, the duration of the lesson, the, the aim and the lesson outcomes. But we also have uh, the timings, the trainer activities, the learner activities. So what the learners are going to be encountering uh, during each uh, section of the lesson resources, uh, inclusion. So how are you going to make your lesson inclusive at every sector of uh, the lesson? Assessment methods and also functional skill uh, opportunities as well. So 
how you are going to promote and embed literacy, numeracy, language, and also digital, so ICT opportunities for your learners to develop those key functional skills as well. So lesson plans are very valuable if you're teaching um, perhaps a new course or qualification, so it will provide you with structure for your courses. But what do I need in terms of evidence for my level five diploma in education and training course? Well, you are required to submit eight lesson plans in total. Now, uh, you are required to submit one lesson plan for each lesson observation. So we have eight uh, lesson observations in total, okay, to be conducted in your own time, okay? So this is where you are going to be observed by your observer, um, but you need to submit a lesson plan. So lesson observations are a formal uh, affair and you are required to submit um, a lesson plan for each one of those lesson observations. Excuse me. So the lesson plans can be created uh, using the train aid uh, template. OK, that's absolutely fine. However, if you have your own company, your own organization's lesson plans, if you're more familiar with writing on your very own company templates, and of course, please do submit lesson plans that you already have. OK. Lesson plans don't need to be too detailed. One to two pages in maximum is absolutely fine. And once again, train aid, we, we do have many example lesson plans that we can share with you if you're new to, to lesson plan writing as well. So we can give you lots of support there as well. But just to reiterate, eight lesson plans are, are what is what, what is required uh, for your teaching evidence there. Now we're just coming on to, to lesson observations. So you need to submit to us eight uh, lesson observations to complete your level five diploma in education and training. So uh, you are required to submit eight one hour lesson observations. And once again, you do need to submit eight uh, lesson plans for this criteria. Just on the screen, we have a, a snapshot of the train aid observation form. OK, so the lesson observations are to be arranged between you and your mentor and throughout your level five journey. You can spread out your eight lesson observations. As mentioned previously, you can, of course, use different um, observers, but we do require their teaching qualification as well. They must have a level five teaching qualification or higher, such as a PGCE. Now, in regards to these lesson observations, they're developmental. They do not have a grade. OK, so the feedback is between you and your mentor. They do not have a bearing on your certificate. So with your level five certificate at the end of your journey, it doesn't have your lesson observation grade. So that is a very common question that we do get here at train aid our advice as well with your lesson observations is there should be a two-week grace period in between each lesson observation so for example you cannot have two lesson observations per week you can have one lesson observation then a grace period of of two weeks for you to improve um, on your areas for development and then you obviously you can book in the next lesson observation with your mentor as well so hopefully um, that is obviously making sense when it comes to these lesson observations the lesson observation does need to be a minimum of an hour long OK, um, a 15 minute uh, learning walk or a 15 minute observation would not count. So please, please, please do make sure these lesson observations are formal. OK, and your observer has enough time to observe you throughout your your whole lesson. OK, just remember the lesson observations um, can either be typed or handwritten as well. So if you are perhaps delivering a practical lesson, well, of course, your observer can handwrite uh, the lesson observation form. So if they're using a clipboard and pen, they can, of course, observe you and you can scan your lesson observation form if it's handwritten. That will count absolutely 
Okay, so once again, you can use your own internal lesson observation form, or you can use the lesson observation form provided by temp uh, by train aid. Uh, but just remember lesson observations, they're developmental, uh, they're not graded, they they don't have an impact on your certificate. Um, once again, if you do not have a mentor or observer, then train aid can observe you for one hour. OK, um, for, for one hour. Uh, and that will be one observation. But the cost will be 60 pounds, including VAT. If you do have an in-house mentor who's willing to observe you, fantastic. Please do send a, a copy of their certificate as soon as you can. Criteria six is the, the lesson observation self-evaluation form. So as we know, as a teacher, it's so vital that you are reflecting on your own teaching practice, okay, on a regular basis. However you've delivered your lesson, if you've delivered an outstanding lesson or if it's a lesson which uh, didn't go to plan, and it has reflecting on yourself and how you can make changes as a teacher. That's incredibly important. So for the self-evaluation side of, of your qualification, you are required to complete eight self-evaluation forms. And these are to be completed uh, after each one of your lesson observation forms. So the, the self-evaluation form is to be completed by you. It's reflecting on your strengths your areas for development, and also any action points as well. So your strengths are what went well within the lesson. So what, what can you be proud of? What went well within your, your lesson observation? What were you pleased with? Okay. And also, uh, we're looking at areas for development. So things that you can improve on, things that perhaps didn't go so well. OK, so learning uh, to become a teacher is a journey. So it, don't be too hard on yourself if uh, things didn't go to plan. Perhaps write down uh, a few areas for development. Perhaps avoid bullet points with your lesson observation, with your self-evaluation form. Write in sentences and paragraphs here, okay? So do pick out perhaps two to three areas for development and actions required. This could be targets for your future lesson observation as well. This could be perhaps observing a fellow colleague teach a lesson. You could perhaps improve your confidence as a teacher by delivering perhaps on the next school or college inset day. You could uh, host a meeting. You could chair a meeting. That is going to improve your management skills as well. So perhaps think about how you can improve yourself with targets there. Just remember, with your self-evaluation forms, these must be signed by yourself and also the observer as well. An electronic signature is required here rather than typed as well. So just remember, you are required to complete eight self-evaluation forms and each form needs to be signed by a teacher. If you have your own internal self-evaluation form, you can, of course, use that version. Um, but if not, then please use the train aid uh, form, which is uh, just shown there. Once again, self-evaluation forms can be handwritten uh, and scanned, or they can be typed. It's completely up to you. Criteria seven within your portfolio is evidence of initial and diagnostic assessment. So initial assessment and diagnostic testing. So what does it what does this mean initial and, and diagnostic assessment so initial assessments typically happen at the start of a course uh, or a new qualification and they serve to identify uh, your learners current skills your your learners uh, current understanding of your qualification so it's very useful uh, to conduct an initial assessment because you can find out your learners strengths areas for development, perhaps gaps within their knowledge. And uh, initial assessments are incredibly useful because it does help to ease learners into a course and to see whether the course or qualification is, is right for them. 
and it helps to establish whether they need any support. So uh, initial assessment can be perhaps uh, a, a meeting. It can be perhaps an icebreaker. It can be a phone conversation with a learner. And this is going to, to really help them to establish whether the course is right for them. OK, so what does it mean for your level five teaching portfolio? So what we are looking for here at TrainAid is for you to submit to us examples of initial or diagnostic assessments that you use within your own teaching. OK, so initial assessments can happen at the start of a year. They could happen at perhaps the start of a new course lesson okay they can be informal they can be formal okay so typical uh, initial assessments could be perhaps a, a course application or an enrollment form okay which can be completed manually or online it could be interview questions or a discussion so uh, an interview perhaps before learners come on to your course or qualification it could be an observation where you have to observe a learner performing a skill uh, within their workplace, perhaps before they come onto your course. It can be any self-assessment activity. If you use any literacy or numeracy online tests through systems such as BKSB, um, it can be less formal. Things like icebreakers, activities, quizzes, which ease learners into a lesson. It could be any recap activities or tests. So that is going to see if your learners have perhaps taken in content from a previous lesson and they're going to to serve a purpose to 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 really start your your lesson off on the front foot as well so within your teaching portfolio hopefully um, this has uh, really highlighted some examples of initial and diagnostic assessments so perhaps do send in uh, within your portfolio word documents of application forms it could be photos of any initial or diagnostic assessment it can be photos of quizzes games it can be handouts that you give to learners at the start of a lesson as well so just remember when it comes to your teaching portfolio try to submit to us five different examples of initial or diagnostic assessment so just on the screen there we have one of our course application forms. So you could submit to us perhaps a blank application form. So that's an example of an initial assessment there. So can you think of five that you can submit to us either perhaps within a Word document with uh, photos, uh, an explainer, uh, perhaps a paragraph of information of how you use your five initial and diagnostic assessments. But please do reach out to us if you do have any questions or would like some examples of initial or diagnostic assessment there. So that is criteria seven within our teaching portfolio. Criteria eight is individual learning plans. These are otherwise known as ILPs or one-to-one -one reviews. Now, ILPs are basically small meetings between you um, and your learners. And the purpose of this is that they are small meetings to see uh, how your learners are progressing uh, with their course or qualification. So uh, ILPs usually take anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour. And it's an opportunity for you to sit down with your learner and to say, this is what you're doing well. These are your areas for improvement. These are your targets as you're striving towards your qualification as well. So ILPs are an incredibly valuable experience because without ILPs, um, learners might be confused about their progress. They might think that they're progressing well on their course when they're really not. And it's very important for you as a teacher or trainer to give them some pointers, to give them some help and guidance to say, fantastic, you're on the right track. Or unfortunately, we need to arrange some support here. We need to perhaps arrange some support sessions for you to improve and for you to achieve your end goal as well. So ILPs, I like to think as miniature meetings, they are appraisals you have with your learners.
Now, we are looking for you to submit to us five completed ILPs, okay? Now, please don't worry. The names of the learners are not required. We are looking for you to be able to be able to conduct ILPs with your learners. Now, many level five learners say to me, Nick, I don't, I, I don't complete ILPs within my teaching. I've never completed them uh, before. Perhaps you teach one day first aid courses where you don't encounter ILPs. Well, don't worry. My suggestion is here is that you can perhaps complete an ILP with your learners, perhaps during a coffee break. Uh, you could talk about how the course or training is going for them today and, and perhaps discuss how they can use their, their this, this training within their future practice as well. So please do have a go of an ILP, even if you haven't used these before. You can, of course, uh, keep uh, the, the learner name um, off the ILP. We don't need to see that if you're, you're worried about confidentiality, that's absolutely fine. Um, just on the next slide, we have um, examples of, of ILPs. As we can see here, we have discussion notes, we have targets, and also to be achieved by. So this is a traditional ILP. And it's about giving learners some targets. It's giving them a pat on the back to say very well done. Or it can be, uh, you know, an opportunity to give them some targets. So they're going to, to, to work on those targets and you are going to support them with their course journey. But once again, please do try to submit five completed ILPs for your portfolio. Criteria nine is teaching resources. Um, we are very interested to see which teaching resources you use within your teaching practice. So teaching resources, they bring interest to a lesson. They bring variety. They are fun. They're interactive. And they do support teachers and trainers uh, with their, their teaching journey. So we're looking for you to uh, submit to us different teaching resources that you use. You can, of course, um, show us screenshots of resources, pictures of resources that you use. You could submit to us perhaps photos of textbooks because they are, of course, an important resource. You can submit to us handouts, uh, paper-based uh, resources, um, PowerPoint slides, PowerPoints. Um, we're also looking for you to submit to us a supporting Word document describing your five resources and how they're effective within your teaching environment as well. So resources is something that we are very interested in. And do try to submit five uh, resources. OK, if you can think of five, hopefully you can. And this will certainly meet the resources criteria as well. So think about perhaps sending to the, the train a team photos of uh, videos that you show to your learners, PowerPoint slides. Um, it could be physical resources, um, any hard copy resources as well. Uh, we are very interested to, to see those. Criteria 10 is communication with colleagues. This uh, can be emails, minutes of a meeting. It can be meeting plans, agendas. For this criteria, we're looking for you to demonstrate that you are an effective communicator with a team of fellow teachers, trainers or staff members as well. So for any teacher, communication is, is vital. For any, for any trainer, uh, communication is vital. So we're looking that you to see that you can collaborate within a team of teachers or trainers, that you can perhaps share good practice. Um, but ultimately, we are looking for you to submit perhaps screenshots of emails to colleagues. It can be perhaps minutes of the meeting, any meetings that you've chaired, um, any any meetings that you've attended as well, any CPD event information. It can be any inset day information, any training that you've developed, any training that you've rolled out to your team. So we're looking to see examples of communication here. Now, as an example, uh, we have a, an email here between myself and one of my colleagues um, just uh, talking about 
uh, booking in a, a meeting. We also have an example of a meeting agenda. So that shows verbal communication as well. So this is the evidence that we are looking for from you. It could be screenshots of emails. We don't need to see anything sensitive, by the way. So please don't send us anything uh, which is going to worry you. Um, only send across uh, within your portfolio examples that you are happy to share. So um, any type of meeting agenda, any meeting plan any um information about courses that you are attending as well all of that is vital information there our final uh criteria is learner feedback so as as a teacher uh we are looking for for you to be able to have the ability to reach out to your learners and to gain some valuable feedback from them. So of course, if you're teaching training, at any stage of your teaching career, it's very important to gain learner feedback as well, okay? That's the only way that you can improve on your, your teaching style and the methods of delivery. So we are interested to see if you can reach out to your learners and gain some valuable course feedback. Excuse me. So in regards to this criteria, um, we are looking for you to be able to reach out and gain feedback from your learners about your lessons. So with regards to this criteria, you can uh, provide your learners with paper based feedback forms, for example, like the one on the screen here. Um, we can also accept emails from your learners about what your learners have said about your teaching or training. Um, learner feedback can come in the form of electronic feedback. It could be using uh, websites such as SurveyMonkey, for example, or any type of data which demonstrates to us that you can reach out and gain this, this vital information. Or the learner feedback can come through in surveys, results, um, annual review data as well. So all of that can be vital information for how you can improve your teaching style as well. So please do use uh, perhaps the, the paper-based feedback form provided by TrainAid or any internal system. We are not here to read the comments. We will not be doing that, but it's we're more interested in uh, your ability to reach out to your learners. So as a teacher, can you do that? If you can, fantastic. You can submit to us uh, that data, that information, and that will meet the, the criteria here as well. Thank you very much for watching. So this is the, the welcome video for the level five diploma in education and training. So if you've just signed up to the course, this video will be useful to really outline the course in further detail. But of course, you will have a welcome meeting with one of the level five uh, team. OK, if you have any questions whatsoever regarding the qualification, please do get in contact with us. You can speak to one of the team. You can speak to myself. And we have obviously our office hours on Monday to Friday, nine to five. Uh, please do give us a call about any of our teaching, any of our training courses, and we can point you in the right direction to see if the course is right for you. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Please do join the YouTube community. Please do like the video. Please do subscribe. And please provide us with any comments on any videos that you would like to see. Once again, thank you ever so much for watching. So my name is Nick, and we hope to see you on one of our courses. Bye for now.